Hey there and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up and use Payload with a SQLite database. Now, currently, if we want to start a new Payload project, we have three options regarding our database. The first one is MongoDB, and that's a NoSQL database that Payload has originally been built for. Now, in recent versions, Payload also added support for both Postgres and SQLite through a database adapter called Drizzle. Now, as I said, in this video, we're going to focus on SQLite. Now, just to touch on it briefly, why would you want to choose this over, let's say, for example, MongoDB? Now, SQLite is generally considered to be very simple and there's no setup needed. So you don't need to install any huge you know, database server on your local machine. You don't need to spin anything up. SQLite is pretty much just a single file um, that you can use as a database. Now, this also makes it incredibly portable. It pretty much runs everywhere and also very easy to backup because you just have to copy a file. And one thing about SQLite as well is that it has great performance for small data sets and rather simple queries. So SQLite, for example, could be a great fit if you're building a simple marketing website that doesn't need to store tons of data um, and just has you know, a few simple queries and the data doesn't change that much. Now, just to talk about a few deployment scenarios that you might face with SQLite. The first one and the, the simplest use case for SQLite is creating reproductions. So for example, if you discover a bug in payload, you can create an issue and you can say, hey, this is the issue that I'm facing. And what is always very helpful is creating a so-called reproduction of that error. So the payload team can actually see, hey, what is going on there and can reproduce this error. Now to do this, it is very cool to have the option to just include the database file in the repository with all the information, all the setup, Obviously you should not store any um, sensitive data in there, but it's very easy. You can just include it, uh, you can push it, and um, that will make sure that people pretty much only have to pull down your um, reproduction, install the NPM libraries, and they can just start up the development server and look at the issue. Now you also might want to deploy your production application to a platform as a service like Vercel. Now, this is by default not possible since SQLite is just a file. And in serverless applications in general, um, those applications are started up in, in containers that are not persistent, which means that if you would just use a normal database file, it would get you know completely wiped every time you redeploy the application. So if you want to deploy a SQLite and payload project with Vercel, you will need to use a third party. One very popular choice is uh, Torso, which I'm going to show you how to set up uh, later. And it is actually very, very simple. The third option that you might want to choose is not using Vercel, but using something like Coolify that gives you a very similar developer experience like Vercel, um, but is more like a Docker based um, deployment solution and you control your own server. So what you can do in this case, you don't, obviously you can still use something like Terso for a remote database, but you also have the choice to opt in to just store this specific database file as a persistent storage, which, which is then mounted in the Docker container that you deploy. And that makes sure that, you know, however often you deploy the database file, still stays the same and is not overwritten. So let's create a brand new payload project using SQLite. To do this, I'm going to type npx create payload app. I'm just going to hit enter. That will ask me for the project name. I will call it SQLite payload. I can choose a project template. I'm just going to choose blank. Now here I can select the database and instead of MongoDB, I will use SQLite and now I can just enter a custom connection string. I will leave it as it is for now. And this will just install all dependencies. So let's wait for a second. And when all dependencies have been installed, we can just 
open up the project. So I'm going to CD into SQLite and I'm going to open up VS Code. So if we take a quick look at our project right here, we currently don't have any database file in there, but it will be automatically generated once we start up our development server for the first time. Now, all I have to do is do npm run dev that will start up the development server on localhost 3000. So we can just look at this here, localhost 3000. Remember to put in admin and we will be greeted with a welcome screen. I'm just going to say def at all about payload.com. Enter a password, click on create. And now we have a fully functioning payload application. Now let's just quickly go back into our code base. And as you can see here, we have our SQLite payload database file, which is the file that stores all of our data. So let's just go ahead to show this to you and delete it and restart our server. And if we reload the entire page, we're now shown again our login screen here. So all data got erased. So the thing, the only thing that you have to take care of with this database is this specific file in here. Now, as mentioned, this setup will work for simple tasks like reproductions, or if you have, you, you know, you just throw your applications on your server. But if you want to deploy with your cell, you will need a third party. So what I will show you in this case is Terso, which is a third party that allows us to have a remote SQLite database. And we can use that remote database on our local machine if we want to, but also in platforms like Vercel. And, and that's a very cool part, Terso is incredibly easy to set up. So I've just opened up the quick start guide here. The first thing that we have to do is install the Terso CLI. You can do that with Homebrew if you're a Mac OS or you know, on, Lindo, uh, on Linux or on Windows, there are different commands. We're on Mac, so I have already installed this one. Next thing that you have to go through is just a sign up to Terso. So you just open up your terminal and you pretty much, whoops, sorry. You pretty much just type in Terso auth sign up. Now it will tell me that I'm already signed up, but if you're not, it will just open up your browser and you can just sign up with you know either GitHub or through email. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> you're set up with, with Terso. Now to create a new database, all you have to do is you have to type Terso DB create, and then you give the database a name. So let's do this. Terso DB create, um, SQLite dash payload. And now it will automatically create a database in their nearest data center to my location. In this case, it's, I think Europe West. And that is pretty much it. We can show it, which we don't actually have to. What I need is, and that is more important, I need my connection URL so that I can connect the payload application with it. And I also need to create and copy my authentication token to make the entire connection secure. So we can go to step five here, just select TypeScript and JavaScript. And that's the command that we want to use, terso db show and then the URL to get the connection URL first. So back in our terminal, I'm going to say terso db show. And now I just have to put in my name, SQLite payload. And this should give me back my connection URL. So I will just copy this, go back into our code base and paste it in our environment variables. So here you can see we have database URI and currently that's just this local file. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace it with our remote URL. Now the second thing that we need is an authentication token. And if we check our payload config, so here on the source payload config.ts, in our SQLite adapter, we currently just have a URL set up. What we need to add here is something called an auth token. And I'm going to set it up so that it's automatically read from our environment variables as well. So what I will do here is I will say process.env database auth token. Now I have to go back to my environment variables and I'm going to create this database auth token 
Let me just double check if that's the correct name, database auth token, yes. So the only thing left is actually creating that token. And again, it's a simple command, terso db tokens create. So I'm going to say terso db tokens create, and then the database name, SQLite payload. And that will return an authentication token here that again, I can copy. I can go back to my code base I can paste in here. And that should be everything that we need to do. So let's go back and see if this works. I'm just going to delete my local file because we don't need that anymore. I'm going to kill the development server and restart. So let's go back and refresh our admin UI. And if it connects successfully, we should again be greeted with our welcome screen where we can create our user all about payload.com, a simple password, click on create. And the difference this time is that as you can see, we don't have any database file here, but it actually wrote this user to the remote database. So if we want to deploy this to Vercel, it's very straightforward. We can just use the exact same credentials here. And that way we can use the SQLite database in all serverless applications where we can't have this specific database file. Now, this will be it for today's video. I hope you could see how incredibly easy it is to set up payload with SQLite and even setting up a third party like Terso. And even for us, even though we will choose, you know, in 99% of cases, we will either choose MongoDB um, or in some cases Postgres over SQLite for production projects. I think it's still worthwhile to explore it and, you know, see the potential upsides or maybe downside that it might bring. So if you do have any more questions about SQLite or Terso, let us know in the comments below. Uh, we will try to answer as best as possible. And apart from that, take care and see you in the next video.